Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Databricks is gaining on the popularity. They are pretty innovative, all-in-one solution. They can be affordable if you know how to use it. Therefore, it doesn't come as a surprise that more and more people are looking for that certification. And especially when I look around me, people want to, wants to go for the Data Engineering Associate Certificate, which is like the first step in the Data Engineering Databricks path. Therefore, in this short movie, I'm going to tell you everything I know about how to pass this certificate. Also, I'm going to show you some secret repository which is going to definitely help you to do that. The number one question people are asking about this certificate, not only this, but we are making a movie about this one, is is it worth to pass a data engineering associate certificate? Which is a stupid question, I know, because of course the answer is yes and no, depends who you are and what you do. And to make a long story short, my, my, my view on this is that if you are a person which is working on multiple tools, maybe Azure Data Factory, BigQuery, Airflow, you name it, and you just want to demonstrate that <clears throat> whenever you are going to see in your, in, your, in your career the data breaks, you are not going to run away screaming, shouting, completely terrified, but you will know how to deal with it. I think that associate certificate, this is something really good to do. On the other hand, if you are a person who is already specializing or want to specialize in the data rigs, this certificate is absolutely not for you. It's pretty theoretical, it's relatively easy to hard, and it's really the entry level. It's like I would never trust anyone having only this certificate, letting them into my, to my environment, building some pipelines or, or optimizing the whole ecosystem. I think that this is, there is not enough knowledge in this certificate. On the other hand, if I would, I would need to hire a data engineer who would need to do different pieces of work in different tools, maybe in, in Azure or in Google, and I would need him or her to, you know, to have a good understanding of everything, I mean, I would, I would really welcome that certificate. I think that it's a great thing to do. So, and at the end of the day, like with many other things, a lot depends on how much money you have. The cost is $200 plus taxes, no, which which is uh, which is something it's it's a bit especially for some people so if you don't have a better things to do with that money go for that certificate if you want to specialize in the data bricks and this money is a lot for you i would wait i would educate further and i would go straight away for the professional anyway here are five things four pretty simple things which you can do read or execute before the certificate to increase your chance of passing it First thing, numero uno, you need to go for the official exam guide. And this can be found on the Databricks page, Databricks Certified Data, Data Engineer Associate. If you scroll down, you see here some further details about the exam. You see also that the reg registration fee is 200 bucks. If you scroll down further, here you have, review the Data, Data Engineer Associate exam guide, which I know that it's a bit of boring advice to give, but really, really, how otherwise you wanna prepare yourself without going through the guide? And actually the good thing about this one is that this is very consistent with what you are going to see on the exam. Here you are going to have six, sec six sections, if I remember right, plus few questions at the end, sample questions which you can also check yourself, there is also answers for them. And if we go quickly through the sections, that's really what you are going to see on the exam. They will, at the beginning, they will test your uh, familiarity with some marketing Databricks material and why Lakehouse is so superior and better than anything else. And then there will be some, some useful questions about the clusters, about the repos. Repos are important, you need to know how to use repos. And in other sections, data transformations, management, building a pipelines with the data lake and the workflows so the new way and the let's say old one or the more classical way not the old classic way and the data unity catalog and the cool thing here is that when it's going about the section two three four and five and six you are going you can greatly help yourself by going through the secret repository which is actually the thing number two to do our secret repository, which will be on our GitHub. Well, it's not really our. It was available some time ago on the Databricks Academy GitHub. And then I have forked it or copied it. Nowadays, they don't have it there. 
I don't know why they have removed it. It's it's such a great resource. Or maybe they maintain it somewhere else. Somewhere else, I just cannot find it. Anyway, in that repositories, you are going to see a couple of notebooks. Here those are into the Pi Spark, ETL with Spark, and in each folder, you are going to have a number of the notebooks with different exercise, teaching and explaining various the topics very very well. For instance, this is the first lesson, Spark SQL. I will show you very quickly how it looks like. There is also one trick. So that's, that's the notebook. There is some explanation, graphs, a lot of text. Really great job, database. This is really good material and it's such a pity that it's no longer available. Anyway, so you will find it in my repository, at least until Databricks will not ask me to take it out. Uh, at the beginning of each notebook, there is something what is called classroom setup, which you need to run. But, but, if you run it with the modern cluster, with the modern runtime, like I'm using right now cluster with the runtime 13.3, you will get an error that expected runtime is one of those. 11.3 something, 11.3 photon and blah, blah. Therefore, you need to create a cluster like I did with that expected runtime and only then you will be able without any issue to run that setup as I did just right now. And once this will be successful, once you will be successful doing that, there will be available for you different tables like here is a def data table products created. There will be available different files, different variables, which will be necessary to execute different exercise. So you need to deal with that issue. Remember 11.3 and where you will get an error, error once you will run it on the newer version. The third thing is that this repository is great, but it's not enough. On the exam, there will be a lot of questions about your familiarity with the UI, how to create the, the jobs, what options you have. So my advice, and I'm hearing a lot of people leaving the exam being surprised that how many questions they got about the GUI, graphical user interface, I would recommend you to spend a bit of time going in different places of the UI, like here, going into the workflow, you know, create a new job, check what options you have. What can you choose here? You can notebook, but what else? Python wheel, a jar or Spark Submit, what options are available for you? Uh, how do you pass the parameters? I mean, that's the type of the questions you can expect on the exam. So really going through the UI uh, as well as administrative part. Uh, I think that there, there can be a questions about how do you get, how do you create, uh, where in UI you create access tokens. So you need to know where to go that you need to go to the user setting then to the developer access token Th those are kind of the things which whenever you know whenever you are working with the data risk on a daily basis you basically know where to go if you are not already using a cli or sdk but when someone asks you about it it's like you you may you can get easily a black hole in your memory and, and, and completely don't remember what to do therefore spending a time on going through the ui is really important Okay, so we've spoken about official exam guide, cool secret repository going through the UI. Another great thing to do, it's something what was available long time back, not so long time back, not so long time back, couple months ago. It was, they were, they were coming on the page, actually somewhere here, they were having Databricks Data Engineer Associate Practice Exam. It's not longer on that page, but when I Google it, I can easily find a link like practice exam. It's still under Databricks domain. So, so they, they still make it publicly available. I will copy that to my GitHub so you don't need to look for it. And what it is, is just sample exam from a couple months ago. I don't know if there is a date, but I went through that pretty, pretty quickly. It's, I think it's pretty up to date. So it has to be from this year, from 2000. 23 and that's it the exam is not really difficult i think it's that's doing the repository which is really nice it will teach you PySpark, a bit of sql going through the ui going through that test exam and and you will be good i'm sure i'm pretty convinced that you are going to be good 
The last step, the final step, is to schedule the exam test. I saw so many people not scheduling the exam test and then every week they are learning just more and more. No, I need to learn that and I need to learn that. And they spend so much time and effort on preparing themselves for the exam. Unnecessary, unnecessary. This is not so difficult exam. You need to schedule an exam and I am sure that going through those points you will prepare yourself. At least when it's going about me, I will keep my finger crossed. I wish you guys all the best. Subscribe the channel, tell about it to your neighbors, enemies, friends, people on the bus stop, whoever you can. And see you soon because there is more cool videos coming shortly.